Hi and welcome back to another YouTube video and today we're continuing our series on the children of Jaharis and Alassane and on today's schedule we have Miguel and Vagon, so two quite differing siblings and don't forget to follow the socials and like, subscribe and put on post notifications so that you'll be notified when I post another YouTube video and don't forget to leave a comment down below. Without further ado, let's begin. So Princess Miguel was born in 62 AC and she was said to be a quiet, gentle, studious and exceedingly bright girl and as a child she quickly attached herself to her older sister Alyssa much in the very same fashion that all of the younger children of Jaharis and Alassane would attach themselves to their elder siblings. However, Alyssa was not a fan of this as we said in the last video and began to avoid Miguel. However, Miguel did succeed in becoming the guiding star for her younger and more simple sister Dela though. And at the age of 10, Miguel was promised to the faith as a novice and she was very eager to take her vows as she was a deeply religious girl and Alessand stated that this was to show thanks to the mother above and the faith of the seven who had blessed her with so many children, all bright and beautiful, and that it was only fitting that she give one back. And after the entire ordeal with Princess Sira, it was publicly announced that Princess Miguel would be the one to take charge of her sister's instructions as a novice silent sister, but we all know what happened to Sira. And Miguel did take leave from the faith in 87 AC and this was done so that she could comfort her mother, Queen Alassane, in her grief as she'd lost three daughters in the space of five years. And it was actually Miguel who helped reconcile her parents after their first and second great quarrels. So I guess out of all the siblings, you could call Miguel the middle ground, Miguel being the neutral party in all of it, taking no sides and just trying to resolve conflicts. And as we said, Miguel had a healing, gentle heart and she would nurse children affected with grayscale. However, she wasn't exempt from acquiring the disease herself, so she died at the age of 34, her arms and legs turned to stone. And then we have Vagon Targaryen. So Prince Vagon was born in 63 AC as the seventh born to his parents and though he claimed the silver gold hair and purple eyes of the Targaryens, he could never be described as calmly. He had a long face, round shoulders, and a sour, pinched cast to his mouth, and he wasn't robust, nor was he considered a coward, but he was a miserable fighter. Quiet and wary as a boy, he wasn't well-liked by anyone. His parents always assumed that Vagon would wed his sister Dela, as they were very well-matched as babes, but as they grew, the resentment only increased of one another, and Vagon tolerated his sister's presence not an inch more. He thought her to be stupid. Dela, on the other hand, was scared of her brother and she thought him mean, which he was. And Jaharis, he was like, it's fine, they'll warm to one another. But they didn't. The resentment only increased, as I said. And in 73 AC, one of Queen Alassane's companions asked when he and Dela would wed and Vagon's reply publicly scorned Dela. So he said that Dela would need to find a husband who wanted stupid children because that was all she was ever like to give him. And Dela heard this and fled the hall in tears. So it was down to their sister Alyssa to defend Dela's honor by pouring a flagon of arbor gold on Vagon's head, but it didn't matter, he didn't care, he just said that it was a waste of a fine vintage. So after that incident, Alassane and Jaharis mutually agreed that they needed to find other matches for their children, as Dela and Vagon would never work. So a betrothal with his younger sister Sierra or Visera was briefly considered but ultimately ignored. And Jaharis tried to make Vagon more wholesome by having his older brother Balon train him in the yards, but Vagon, as we said in the last video, did not enjoy it and showed no improvement over the year. So Balon had their sister Alyssa challenge Vagon in the yards in hopes of Vagon fighting against a woman would make him show some sort of improvement, but alas, no. So Alyssa still remembered the incident with the Arbor Gold and taunted, laughed at, and humiliated and mocked her brother Vagon as Dela was watching from the castle and I think Alyssa knew this which is why she put on quite the show to make her sister feel better which is honestly the sweetest thing. And Alyssa of course was the clear winner and when Vagon could take no more he threw down his sword and shield never to pick up another again. And as Vagon grew older, he began attracting attention from the younger maidens at court who wanted a Targaryen prince to give them a Targaryen child to ride a Targaryen dragon, you know how it goes. And it became very apparent though that Vagon was not interested in girls. And Grand Maester Elisar once gave Vagon an erotic volume of drawings in hopes that the pictures would make Vagon show some kind of interest in men, in women, in anything. And actually the description of this volume of drawings was actually kind of weird, I'm not going to get into it, but suffice to say... It was weird, and Vagon did keep the book, but he remained indifferent to it, so when he turned 15, Alassane and Jaharis was like, enough is enough, and wrote to the Grand Maester and asked if Vagon had it in him to become a maester. 
And the Grand Maester was like, no. But he does have it in him to become an Archmaester. So they were like, yay. Three days later, Vagon was summoned by Jaehaerys and told that he was to board a ship to Old Town within the fortnight. So they were sparing no expense in getting rid of the sun immediately. And Vagon's reply was courteous, but Jaehaerys would later tell Alessand that he thought Vagon almost smiled. A win is a win. A win is a win. I don't care what y'all say. A win is a win. Vagon did become an archmaester at the Citadel of Old Town, holding the ring, rod, and mask of yellow gold, signifying math and economics, and Vagon would write to his parents, but his words were out of duty, there wasn't any warmth in them, there wasn't any, hey mom, I miss you, it was just like, yeah, I'm writing because I have to. And by the end of the Old King's reign, Vagon remained largely forgotten by the kingdoms, which I understand because watching House of the Dragon, I forgot that there was actually a Targaryen alive and well, in the citadel of Old Town, watching his entire family combust each other into combustion. Um, so that was interesting. And But as we know, maesters and archmaesters and all of that shit, they're sworn not to take any part in the conflicts of the realm. So even if Vagon would have wanted to intervene and pick sides, he couldn't. But with that said, I don't think he would have anyways. I don't think he cared that much. But after the death of Prince Balon, Jaehaerys wrote to his son and summoned him back to King's Landing and some argue that this was to offer Vagon the crown and that Jaehaerys was denied and others say that the king simply sought Vagon's counsel on the matter of succession and I do think it's the latter because I think Jaehaerys knew that Vagon would not make a wholesome king. It's one thing to know the technicalities of kingship and to be good at the nitty gritty and the economic side of things, etc. But you also need to be wholesome. You need to be well liked by the small folk, by the lords, by the by the people, by your subjects. And I don't think Vagon would achieve this. And I think that Jaehaerys, especially after seeing Balon and Aemon, knew that Vagon would not be good at it. Knew that Vagon, who was disliked as a child, who was disliked as an adult, who was cold, who was distant, would not gain the love of the small folk. And you cannot rule. If you do not have the love of the people, if you you can rule, but it won't last. You need to have the respect of the people. Who can rule without wealth or fear or love? And I think, as I said, Jaehaerys knew that Vagon would not achieve this. So what does offering Vagon the crown achieve? Nothing. So, yeah, my thoughts on the matter. But it was actually Vagon's notion that the king should have a great council to settle the issue once and for all. And as I said, Vagon was never liked much by anyone, but he did rise high in the citadel and had great skill for math and economics, which is what the Golden Link signifies, as I said. And it isn't known when Vagon died, but it was definitely after 101 AC. And here we have some quotes about or regarding Miguel for your viewing pleasure. That same year, the gods blessed Jaehaerys and Alessand with yet another child, a daughter they named Miguel, a gentle, selfless, and sweet-natured girl, and exceedingly bright, she soon attached herself to her sister Alyssa, much in the same way that Prince Balon had attached himself to Prince Aemon, though not entirely as happily. Now, it was Alyssa's turn to bristle at having the baby clinging to her skirts. Septa Miguel, that gentle soul, died in 96 AC, her arms and legs turned to stone by grayscale, for she had spent her last years nursing those afflicted with that horrible condition. His journeys finally ended in Old Town, where he visited with his daughter Septa Miguel, was blessed by the High Septon, and feasted by the Conclave, and enjoyed a tourney staged in his honor by Lord Hightower, Sir Ryan Redwine, again emerged as champion. The mother above has been so good to me, to bless me with so many babes, all bright and beautiful, Queen Alessand declared in 73 AC when it was announced that her daughter, Miguel, would be joining the faith as a novice. It is only fitting that I give one back. And here we have some quotes about Vagon for your viewing pleasure, so let's begin. Vagon was an archmaester at the Citadel, a cold and distant son, he had grown to be a cold and distant man. He wrote, as a son ought, his words were dutiful, but there was no warmth to them. And it had been years since Queen Alessand had last seen his face. Prince Vagon was as unlike his elder brothers as night to day. Never robust, he was a quiet boy with wary eyes. Other children, and even some of the lords of the court, found him sour. The frustration started with Vagon and Dela. Only a year apart in age, the prince and princess seemed well matched as babes, and the king and queen assumed that the two of them would eventually marry. Teasingly asked the two of them when they would be married, Vagon reacted as if he had been slapped. I would never marry her, the boy said, in front of half the court. She can barely read. She should find some lord in need of stupid children, for that's the only sort he will ever have of her. 
And that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and put on post notifications so that you never miss a video. And I hope you're well, and I hope everything's been going well. That's it. Have a nice day. Bye.